Good morning, guys. We're going to start in just a minute. I'm just watching for 930. Thanks so much for joining in. Appreciate you listening. Um, I see that Amanda is on, and I appreciate it, Amanda, because I may turn to you for some, um, I'm going to mention your resources this morning. Okay, guys, it's 9.30. Um, for those of you who are here, thanks so much for joining in. This is Bullying Part 2. Um, we did, if you look back at past posts, it was uh, February 25th that we did the first bullying, and we talked um, a lot about why it happened. So we talked to some individuals on the spectrum who had been bullied and um, what it was like for them. And I wanted to do a little follow-up. Amanda was good enough... Um, to send us some resources after the last um, uh, bullying topic. And if you scroll down my page, they, they are listed. Um, she's got, there's about nine books that I just took a picture of and it's on the post right before this so that you can see those that are available. A lot of those are on Asperger's autism and written uh, for individuals on the spectrum or about them and, and it hits on this topic. And if others have um, resources that they want to post, please do. And we'll make sure that they get shared. Um, kind of what I want to address this time in the bullying is, um, you know, from a parent's perspective, how, you know, what are we teaching our children? What are we... Um, how are we speaking to them? How are we speaking about them in front of them? Because sometimes we can even, this is going to be um, hard to say, but true, we can even be the bully ourselves without realizing it. And and children pick up everything we do, not just what we say. And, um, and I'll say this, Morgan is really aware of tone and how we're speaking. If we're in a group, um, whether it's my mom and dad, my husband and I are different ones, we can be talking about something we're very passionate about and and the tone of our voice will get, you know, get a little aggressive or just, you know, just in conversation and Morgan will pick up on that and say, oh no, oh no. And then we realize that just that tone has, you know, gotten her attention and she's misunderstood it as someone being angry when we're, you know, just like I said, passionate about a topic. So we try to be very careful about how we speak around her. Something that happened with me, this has been, oh goodness, probably a couple of years back. And, you know, we always put on our best face in front of everybody else and we try to be nice and kind and appropriate. And then we get home sometimes and with the people that we love the most, we, we let our guard down and we slip. And um, I'm, I'm one of these that I have a lot of patience when I think the situation calls for it. But then there's times when I'm such a, controller and a doer that I start wanting stuff to happen right away and I'll talk short or quick to get something done um and my husband and I were in the kitchen and Morgan was too and and he said he said something or asked something and I just gave a real short answer and and it was rude and Morgan picked up on that and she called me on it she said oh do not do that do not talk to dad like that I don't even remember what I said but I think it was more the way I said it, and she caught it, and when it did it, it really, you know, it really convicted me of, you know, I need to think about how I speak to everybody, and um, and so it, it, it made me check that box of respect, no matter who you're talking to, how you speak, um, even how you disagree with someone matters, and, and just, you know, being respectful of others, letting your children see that. Um, and, you know, at all times, because they do pick up on it, they know when it's right and wrong. And so a lot of times a child that bullies or someone who bullies may be hearing things in the home that are, you know, there's, there's disrespect there or, you know, parents are not checking them when they catch them speaking um, out of turn or doing it wrong. So I want to see who's here. I don't know if I'm, um, Amanda, are you still with us? If you are, let me know. 
and and I want to say thank you to uh, like I said for sending those resources um, Amanda said last time she uh, let me know that you know when she was younger that uh, she's on the autism spectrum and in school when she did resource classes or had to go to uh, other classes hey there you go good to thank you I appreciate it and I'm just I'm telling everybody your story a little bit kind of backing up and saying it to a little bit of what you went through and how hard it was um, kids picked on her just because she had to go to some resource classes or get that extra help so they would give her a hard time just because like I said just because of the difference and um, Amanda said she was even kicked when um, you know like under the table or whatever kicked by other kids and and what we saw from our kids who are on the spectrum and don't know to be sneaky when somebody is bullying a lot of times they're sneaky and they'll do these things when teachers can't see and our kids do not know how to reciprocate or come back when nobody's looking so they're the ones who get in trouble a lot of times or when they really shouldn't they're just they're defending themselves or looking out for themselves so that was some of the things she went through but as Amanda's gotten older and now like I said she's read up on a lot of things about you know how to combat that and what's going on one thing that I that I also really believe about bullying a lot of times anger meanness um, just that type of behavior comes out of fear people fear what they don't understand so the more that we can understand each other and understand our differences the more we can get along um, there's a playground here in our community in Hendersonville that's called Mary's Magical Place. Right now it is, um, it has been shut down because of the floods that we had because they've got to repair the flooring and uh, so everybody can get back to it. But the idea of the playground is for it to be all inclusive. It has a lot of equipment that's set up especially for individuals with physical disabilities so that they can be a part of play as well or even like Morgan who maybe didn't have the interest when she was little to play but as an adult she's wanting to do some of those things so it allows her to go back to the playground and be a part of it but just bringing everybody together is a start where we need to go further is we need to learn how to all get along get to know each other and that goes back to the reason I started this whole um, visit with mom thing is I'm always trying to help people understand our disability so the fear is not there so we can just um, ask the questions that we need to ask and when our children ask the questions we can tell them because um, what I heard about Mary's Magical Place a couple of things or saw comments was um, although it was very much meant to include and is meant to include the whole community um, some kids with disabilities have been bullied um, by others because back to people not knowing each other not knowing how to act and uh, so those things have occurred and you know and those and that's part of what we're you know we got to learn we got we got to work together a little better and so I do plan to get um, with uh, the lady some of them who put together Mary's Magical Place and and us have a, an interview at some point we'll sit down maybe when Mary's is open and back up I'd love to get together with her we might do it from down there and and talk a little bit about those things of how we can all be our best around each other Amanda said was saying it was uh, true and you'd heard of that okay I'm sorry Amanda I was just trying to read your comment um oh a Facebook live about it okay okay so I'll talk to you when we finish this we'll um, we'll do some messaging back and forth and see what you know what we can do at another time because we definitely want to address things to help people to get to know each other better but you but back to our topic today of bullying it's just that um, I think when we can better understand the perspectives of each person and why they do what they do maybe we can come together a little bit better um, and I don't know if I mentioned this the last time, but I'll do it now. There was a movie called um, Wonder, and and it, what I really loved about the movie, if you haven't had a chance to see it, it's very worth viewing because um, it showed the perspectives of different people, whether it was the individual with a disability, their siblings, their parents, friends, um, and and even the bully. And you and once you kind of know where someone's coming from. Um, you can, like I said, hopefully iron things out and get along better. 
Um, so again, back soon, I hope to get to, oh, you did see the movie. Good. I'm glad. But I just, I really appreciated that they did that because, you know, a lot of times, especially in today's culture, um, there's a lot of division, a lot of mistrust, a lot of accusing, and even maybe think somebody says something and we just assume the worst or, you know, don't, don't give them the benefit of the doubt. And, um, so I think it's it it's good for all of us to try to remember where people are coming from. Are they coming from a place of fear? Is that why they're bullying? There was an old school thinking a lot of times with some disabilities that things were contagious and people were even afraid of getting something. There was a time back in the very beginning that people thought you could catch autism. And, you know, to me, that's just the silliest thing ever. But, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So... Um, helping people understand that whether it be um, you know autism or even any physical disability that it's not it's not something that someone can catch and and just you know just saying something that's simple that you think everybody should know they don't necessarily and there was a time when um, you know parents would always say if they saw someone oh don't look at them just don't look but um, more what parents should say is, you know, let's try to learn more about it. And I always open that door to say, ask me questions. You know, I'm, I'm an open book. I want you to know more. And, and I just feel like the more comfortable we can get around each other, the more we know each other by name and not just a disability or, or whatever the case may be, the differences. I think the more we know how we're alike, the better we can get along. And this bullying thing won't be as much of an issue um, so if anybody's got any anything to pipe in here, I appreciate it because I'm doing all the babbling once again. <laughs> I want to hear your answer. Is there, is there anyone else out there, um, parent or child, um, anybody who had a bullying situation and has any ideas as far as, you know, how to approach it, how to better um, handle it next time? Maybe it wasn't handled best this time but you'd like to know next time because that's what we're all trying to get to um i will as an aside while i'm waiting on you guys to pipe in i want to tell you uh, one thing before i forget next week um that will be today's the 18th and on i believe the 25th next next monday um i'll be going to traveling to alabama with logan blake um, he's the young man I've spoke about before. He's on the autism spectrum, and we're going down to Alabama to a teacher's award banquet, and we're going to tell his story. So I'm really excited about that. Um, they say when you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So we're going to share Logan's story. And I'm telling you that so that while we're on the road going down there, if we can make it happen, <laughs> technical devices um, being behaving we will try to do a live from there so that I can do a little bit of an interview um, as I ride down with his family. Talk to Logan's mom and, and his dad and him and just tell you all a little bit about what's going on there. So I'm excited to get to do that. Um, if for some reason that goes awry, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a live once we land and we'll let everybody can, you know, I'll tell you how to get back to it. Um, okay, so back to bullying. Let me see where our time is. We're doing good. Um, I, I see Miss Karen. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Did, um, has any, okay, let's see. Um, Amanda says we should all talk to each other and get to know each other. That's true. We really should. And I thank you for sharing before, Amanda. That was very helpful. A lot of the things that you had to say and, and how you, um, like I said, how you learn, what you like to do is read the books and get a lot of information that way to help you um, better communicate. And, oh, and Karen just said, sounds like fun on the live from Alabama. We're gonna do our best to make that happen. So I'm trying to, and, and as I was uh, talking about Mary's Magical Place and that inclusive playground, like I said, in a, I'm not quite sure when it's gonna open back up again, you know, cause we have to, I'll, as I find out more, I'll update you guys. And you can go, they have a Facebook page um, just Mary's Magical Place. You can look that up and they'll have updates on when the playground will open again. And again, I hope to um, talk to them about um, in order to make, like I said, it is an inclusive playground in order to make it successful, um, just everybody knowing how to get along, how to take turns, how to look out for your buddies who have disabilities. And 
you know, that's what's so important. Um, you know, I, I think as it's one of those things, if you're not in those shoes, you just, you, you don't know things necessarily. So for, um, it, even a physical disability versus hidden disabilities, um, I'm, you know, it's like I'm used to dealing with everything that Morgan deals with, with her sensory, um, with autism, sometimes there can be a lot of sensory issues, and that just means light, sound, touch, um, everything